Secretary General, I have the honor to present His Excellency Sandor Marnix Rafael Varga Van Kibed in Macfalva, Ambassador Designate of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the Caribbean community. Ambassador. It is an honor to present my letter of credence today on behalf of my government. I, I'm sending the warmest greetings to the CARICOM and member states and its people, and of course to you, Your Excellency, and your Secretary. And it is a great honor and pleasure, Ambassador, that I accept your letters of credence, which is another step in uh, strengthening the already good relations between uh, the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the Caribbean community. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, it's a great honor for me to present my credentials as 20th century representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Africa, signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Steph Block, to you today. I would have much preferred to be in Guyana now to present my credentials to discuss matters of mutual interest and to get an impression of your headquarters in Georgetown and post COVID. I'm sure that will happen. This virtual presentation from Port of Spain is an innovative and alternative option that has been made possible more and more in recent times. Let me introduce you also to my colleague, Mr. Lingli Giban, who has been for many years the trade officer of the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Port of Spain. This past year has been exceptional. COVID-19 pandemic has affected the entire entire world community and with the vaccination program now starting it's good to see the solidarity among CARICOM member states. Multilateralism remains key in the foreign policy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. International cooperation is essential to preserve peace, promote security, prosperity and justice throughout the world. Major issues like environmental protection, the war on drugs, gender equality, food security, curbing popular population growth, and fighting pandemics require a global approach. My country wants to contribute and is active in numerous multilateral fora. Climate change and global environmental challenges are top priorities. In this region, we've been advocating capacity building programs for small island development states, so-called SIDS. As a matter of fact, the Netherlands Institute for the International Relations, Klingendal, is organizing an online training program for diplomats from six countries called Blue, Blue Di Diplomacy, Enhancing Sustainable Economic Development of the Oceans from the 1st till the 12th of March this year. As ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, I represent the interests of all our autonomous countries in international organizations. Curaçao, Aruba, St. Martin, and the Caribbean part of the Netherlands are direct neighbors of the and an important part of this region. There's a lively interaction between our communities. The Kingdom has in the past been working closely together with SEDIMA and IMPEX. The Kingdom of the Netherlands assisted in the area of maritime counter-narcotics operations and identified regional security, sustainable development and good governance as areas in which relations would be broadened and deepened. We were happy to be able to provide emergency relief when your home country, Dominica, was hit by the devastating Hurricane Maria in 2017. Your Excellency, please allow me to bring up the following in the field of regional security. The Kingdom of the Netherlands, being part of the Caribbean region, is gravely concerned about security developments in the region. Despite the COVID-19 crisis, organized crime is still on the rise, as shown great agility, in terms of circumventing trade and movement restrictions. Illegal narcotics and weapons trade, weapons trade, trafficking, as well as related corruption, financial crimes remain serious threats, undermining the stability of the region's government systems, societies, and economies. 
In light of that, the kingdom continues to actively promote regional legal and law enforcement cooperation. In recent years, we have worked with CARICOM impacts to increase awareness of the San Jose Treaty and the importance of CARICOM member states joining the treaty. This will be an important year for announcing the treaty meeting of the state parties, hopefully taking place at the end of the year. The Kingdom is actively is supporting a, a UNOD project that will help interested countries to clarify and overcome obstructions to signing with a special focus on CARICOM states. The Kingdom looks forward to continuing the work with CARICOM to promote the treaty in order to expand the number of state parties and therewith the treaty's application and effectiveness as a legal base for maritime security cooperation. In addition, the Kingdom would appreciate if the importance of the signing of the treaty could be put on the agendas of the Council for National Security and Law Enforcement and the CARICOM's heads of state. The Kingdom of Netherlands, as a direct neighbor, is deeply concerned about the ongoing crisis in Venezuela. A credible dialogue is needed to find long lasting solutions. There is an important role for the international community to play, and the Kingdom is welcome, welcoming the active participation of CARICOM in this regard. Your Excellency, allow me to finish in a positive note. I'm happy to inform you that the relationship between Suriname and the Kingdom of the Netherlands has quickly intensified since the Santoghi uh, government took office. The Kingdom and Suriname are bound by their populations and their historical ties, as you know. We are working together with the government, with the Suriname government towards a modern and broad relationship based on trust and respect. Over the past months, numerous meetings were held and my Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Steph Block, attended the 45, 45th Independence Day celebra celebration in Suriname on November 25th and on February 10th, so quite recent, His Excellency Ambassador Henk van der Zwan presented his credentials to His Excellency President Santofi in Paramaribo. His counterpart in the Netherlands, His Excellency Ambassador Rajendra Karhi, presented his credentials on the same day in The Hague to His Majesty King Willem Alexander. Your Excellency, dear Secretary General, I'm looking forward to continue the good cooperation between my country, your organization, and the CARICOM member states. And I am at your disposal for further discussions. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Hartelijk dank. Your Excellency, Rafael Vaga, plenipotentiary representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the Caribbean community. Mr. Lindley Gihan, Ambassador Colin Grandison and my other colleagues here in the uh, CARICOM Secretariat. Ambassador, we are here this morning to reaffirm the friendship and partnership between our Caribbean community and the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I am pleased to accept your letter of credence and to extend congratulations on your appointment as the plenipotentiary representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the Caribbean community. Over the years, CARICOM has maintained a friendly and steady relationship with the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It has been enhanced by engagements between the foreign ministers of CARICOM and the Kingdom in 2015 and 2016, and at the level of senior officials in 2017 and 2018. During these engagements, the possibility of CARICOM and the Netherlands signing a memorandum of understanding had been discussed, and the time may be right for completing those discussions. It represents a good starting point for the continuation of high-level interactions. Also in 2018, I participated in an event organized by the Kingdom in the margins of the United Nations General Assembly on strengthening international cooperation in maritime security in the Caribbean. All cooperation in the field of security has been enduring, with the Netherlands being among our key international partners including participation in naval exercises in the region with other nations. The Dutch naval base out of Curaçao has been a key player in the community's efforts in the immediate post-disaster 
phase following hurricanes. This assistance following the devastating hurricanes of 2017 was testimony to what can be possible. This cooperation has been further solidified with the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding in 2019 with the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDEMA. That MOU ensures cooperation on disaster risk management and provides for more efficient access to the support of the Dutch Navy. It also included the accession of Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin to the membership of CIDEMA. Those three constituent parts of the kingdom have applied for associate membership of the community. In furtherance of these, those applications, I led a secretariat delegation to the countries in late 2019 to launch negotiations. The negotiations are well advanced and expected to be successfully completed soon. A clear demonstration of the goodwill that exists is CARICOM's agreement at the invitation of the kingdom to mount an electoral observer, observer mission to monitor the general elections to be held in Curaçao next month. A similar mission observed the 2017 elections. Excellency, on occasion, the community has sought the support of the Netherlands for our positions in regional and multilateral fora. At this particular point in time, the development aspirations of small island and low-lying coastal developing states, SIDS, of CARICOM are under threat. This includes climate-related disasters, and also more recently from the multifaceted effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The community welcomes the Netherlands contribution through the European Union to the COVAX initiative for access to COVID-19 vaccines. CARICOM member states have signed on to the COVAX facility, which is designed to provide equitable access and distribution. As helpful as that facility undoubtedly is, we'll need to expand vaccination coverage for our populations beyond it. For us, the most tourism and travel dependent region in the world, the issue of access to vaccines is a crucial element in rebuilding our devastated economies, as well as protecting our people. No one is safe until everyone is safe. It is why we are deeply concerned at the inequitable access to the available vaccines. Global statistics indicate that some developing con developed countries have contracted enough doses to vaccinate their populations many times over, while some developing countries, such as those in the Caribbean community, are vastly underserved. CARICOM is therefore calling for a global summit to address the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines to ensure fair, transparent, and equitable access. This should be conducted in the context of the World Health Organization's Act A Facilitation Council. CARICOM stands ready to collaborate with international partners, such as the Netherlands, on this issue, which is vital to our full recovery. Our countries are also seeking the valuable advocacy assistance of partners who are influential on the global stage on other issues which are vital to building a resilient recovery. These include access to concessional financing, debt relief, and blacklisting of some of our member states. In regard to blacklisting, CARICOM has noted the Netherlands goes beyond the globally accepted standards, as well as those of the European Union in doing so. Regrettably, your country's actions have not taken into account the substantial progress made by CARICOM member states at compliance with global standards. I urge strongly that the Netherlands pursue a mutually collaborative engagement towards our shared goals of effective tax governance and combating money laundering and terrorism financing. Ambassador, it is my hope that your accreditation opens a new chapter in the relations between CARICOM and the Netherlands. I'm looking forward to enhancing those relations, and I assure you of my full support and that of the staff of the Secretariat. I thank you.